Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, it has been a very odd time in Magic for many reasons. The uh, different kinds of products are coming out. The, well, massive amount of leaks as well. <laughs> that is kind of what is happening right now. But that epic saga of leaks for Modern Horizons 3 might be coming to an end. So let's discuss that. And one pretty big one that I missed as well. So, there was this uh, little post the other day, uh, I believe this was on the MTG uh, Rumors uh, Reddit thread, essentially, and uh, yeah, this image popped up, and this is why we might not be getting any leaks anymore, and apparently, <laughs> apparently, here we go, I'm just gonna read it. Hey guys, sorry for the radio silence, but I've decided to delete all the pictures I have and wait for the actual release, so it seems there is a much larger issue than me, and the only thing I can do is my part and make sure no more leaks spill out into the community. That seems very well written. The devs at WotC work really hard to make these sets for the community, and I know you guys are just as excited as I am, but it's honestly better to leave this to the professionals. I hope you guys can understand my decision and just hang in there a bit longer. Um, okay. Not that I'm not taking this at face value, but... Just some speculation, not making any accusations here at all. Not trying to claim that this is what happened. This is just what I'm thinking could potentially have happened. Is that uh, Wizards reached out to this individual uh, in one way or another with uh, pot potentially a cease and desist, maybe? And saying like, hey, um, yeah, stop doing this or you're going to be in big trouble. Uh, or, you know, you need to give all this product back right now. Or, um... You know, and others might speculate that uh, the Pinkertons might have been might have been sent to their house, uh, which was speculated or confirmed. I don't know uh, for a previous you know leaks whatever last year I think. Right. Regardless, I am not making any accusations as to what Wizards is doing. I just want to make that clear. But um, the way that this is written just seems very PR and very uh, again like the devs at WotC work really hard to make these sets for the community, and I know so like you. There's no way you just had, like, a change of heart just overnight. It was like, oh, darn, what have I been doing? Oh, no. I should really stop these leaks because, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that that is what is going on personally. I'm not going to say that I know what actually happened with this. It just seems a bit fishy to me. That being said, so we might be done with leaks because the person who, uh, you know, posted this was the one who was posting all the leaked images uh and, and had all those boxes or you know products somehow uh but uh another image came up apparently right here uh for sale looks like on um what is this on facebook marketplace so that's another post on uh, mgg rumors uh, about this apparently and that is clearly a uh, modern horizons 3 play booster box so there you go apparently for 300 dollars. don't know how much the actual you know, one is actually selling for, let me know in the comments below, uh, quite a bit. I mean, it's a, it's a premium product because these cards, you know, cost more to print somehow, right, Wizards? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, apparently this is, uh, or, or was at the time on Facebook Messenger, not Messenger, Facebook Marketplace. I see the little Messenger logo right there. That's why I said that. Uh, but if I had to guess, I would say that this has probably been also taken down at some point because Wizards probably... Again, not speculating. I am a little speculating, I guess, right there. But not saying Wizards did this, but I would imagine that they might reach out to this individual and be like, um, no, not going to happen. So we shall see what happens with all this. Um, again, spoiler season for Modern Horizons 3 isn't until probably end of May. But again, like a ton of cards have already been leaked. Uh, again, I, I forgot to say earlier, um, not officially confirmed by wizards nor will they ever be until spoiler season actually is going on and those cards are released in that way so take everything that i've said on this episode everything on the previous leaked episodes with a grain of salt because they're not confirmed that being said with all these leaks there is one that I actually missed uh, apparently and it was pointed out to me that uh i did miss one somehow i am very sorry for missing that one well, that said, let's jump into that one, talk about its potential, and then talk about one other thing as well. So, Null Elemental Blast, and this is not the actual image, I just used this. I used the text that was found on the, you know, blurry image, essentially, to 
uh, you know, put it on this custom magic card so that we can actually discuss it easier, okay? This is not what the actual card is. It's not what the art looks like. It's just so blurry that it'd be obnoxious to just throw up on the screen and try to read through it, okay? Again, take everything with a grain of salt. Instant for a single colorless mana. Null Elemental Blast. Choose one. Counter target, multicolored spell. Destroy target, multicolored permanent. So this is obviously very reminiscent and a base lay callback to, what is it, Red Elemental Blast and Blue Elemental Blast, which is kind of interesting because like those two, you know, we haven't seen, you know, to my knowledge, green, white, or black. Uh, those are like, you know, they go up against each other. You know, the red one destroys the blue ones, the blue destroys the red ones. Yeah, very interesting. But this one is a brand new one, apparently. And again, it's interesting. It really is. Uh, you can either counter target multicolored spell, which, uh, I mean, if you if you really think about it, the vast majority of commanders that see play are multicolored. Like, if you look at the top 20 commanders, I think the only monocolored one in there is Cranko. I'm pretty sure, actually. I think it's Cranko. I think Cranko's still up there. But, like, if you look at the vast majority of commanders out there, many of them are multicolored. Uh, so, at the very least, this could be a one mana counter a commander spell. Or, again, destroy target multicolored permanent spell. So, again, if it hits the battlefield, also destroy it. So, yeah, I mean, at the very least, like, going up against commanders, you're going to have targets for this the vast majority of the time. Uh, if you're going up against three, you know, monocolored players, then, yeah, this card does absolutely nothing for you. That being said, yeah, it's a pretty good effect. This is actually, I mean, I'd say more applicable in in some ways in, in many ways than the red elemental blast and blue elemental blast but like also less applicable again like these are going to deal with more i mean maybe not maybe not i guess yeah yeah i guess they'll deal with more commanders in general but they're not gonna deal with like more just like you can't take out like a rhystic study versus like red elemental blast can it's interesting it's very interesting and how much play is going to see i think is actually really dependent upon like how much colorless production you have in your deck because yeah, if this is one generic mana, obviously this would see a lot of play. I'm certain on play, I'm sure. But because it is a colorless mana, that is more restrictive, actually, to me, than any other color that could be in there, obviously. Because yeah, you kind of either have to have a utility land that taps for that, which some decks just don't. Like, some decks, the only utility lands you really have are, like, fetch lands, essentially. Um, or you need to have, like, enough mana rocks in your deck that do tap for a colorless, like, you know, for example, obviously Soul Ring. Um, that being said, like, there would be times if you don't have enough of that, like, colorless mana fixing, that you actually can't cast this, ironically, even though it's a one-mana spell. So, it, it's interesting. It's a very exciting card. It's one that, like, if you're in a colorless deck, yeah, it's probably, I'm not going to say an auto-include, but, like, colorless decks are getting more and more removal lately, but they really don't have, like, counter spells either. So, like, this is just a slam dunk in those kinds of decks. But, like, if you're in more than a couple colors, like, can you... Like, if you're in four or five color, like, do you have enough utility to actually, you know, cast a spell? Probably not. Because your ramp is probably all mana-based. And the mana-based. <laughs> mana color-based. Uh, I mean, sure, you don't have a soul ring in there or whatnot. But still, like, you don't... You need at least a couple. You don't want this to be a dead card in your hand. You need at least a couple of ways to do that. I'd say, like, one color. Yeah, obviously, you can utilize a lot of utility lands in one color. Two color, absolutely, uh, as well could. I think it also just depends. I mean, it, de it depends on a lot of factors, I guess. <laughs> this is kind of one of more one of those that might be just like more like test it out and see how it ha how it works potentially. I, I do need to mention I forgot to this as well. This is not a mythic rare as well. I believe this is listed as an uncommon. I think actually. So my apologies for having the wrong set coloring in there. Set coloring, the symbol coloring in there. That being said, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how that. Maybe I'm underrating it, but I think I'm. I'm trying to make sure I take into account just the difficulty in casting this in the vast majority of decks out there. And if like, you're in three color, it's definitely very iffy, uh, in my opinion, because you might not have enough utility lands that can tap right colors in those kinds of decks because you do need more mana fixing the more colors that you have, obviously. So let's just see. Let's see. I mean, like, obviously, Red Elemental Blast and Blue Elemental Blast see a good amount of play. They're very powerful cards. And uh, we shall see where this one sees play in. Yeah, I mean, obviously, color stacks, it's a slam dunk in. Yeah, very, very cool, though. Uh, regardless, there is one more thing I do want to talk about. And actually, if you saw my episode yesterday, Ulamog the Defiler was in that episode. That being said, uh, has been requested that I do a quick take around this one. So I talk about cards that work well with it. Because there's some players out there like, uh, you talked about the other Eldrazi. Uh, that's really exciting. Yeah, but we know, Mitch, that you like five color. Um, 
But hey, how about uh, Colos Ulamog? Because uh, this one is a gross. Uh, so again, uh, I take everything I say with a grain of salt. This has not been officially confirmed to be an actual card. I will go through this quickly, then let's go through the budget buys and price your picks on it, okay? And I will include a card list link in the description below, but again, it's a leak. It's not officially confirmed. So hey, uh, don't just go out and buy cards that work well with it. Ask your playgroup first, maybe, if they're like, hey, like, okay, can I proxy this and play with this already? And if it's not an actual card, you're still okay with that? And if they are, great. If not, maybe wait until it's actually in front of be a real card and pick up anything. Anyway, 7-7 seven, seven, Eldrazi for 10 mana. We cast a spell, target opponent exiles half their library, round it up. Ward sacrifice to permanence, Ulog the Filer, enters the battle for the number of counters on it equal to the greatest mana value among cards in exile. Ulamog has Annihilator X for X the number of counters on it. Yeah, gross. Uh, very gross. Uh, let's jump into how I would build around this monstrosity. First up, let's talk about the budget buys. Game cards that are less than $1. Within my budget, we are going to be talking about Crashing Drawbridge first. A 0 for Artifact Creature Wall for 2 mana with Defender. You're not including it in the deck because it's a 0 for Blocker. You're including it in the deck because it has Tap, Creature Control, Gain, Haste until end of turn. There aren't that many ways. I mean, there's a decent amount, obviously. There, there's not an absurd amount of ways, though, to grant haste to your team in Colorless. I mean, you normally care about your team, more or less. You really care about your commander. If you can just attack once with your commander, you can probably just decimate one opponent. Again, because it's going to be hitting hard, right? I mean, let's say you exile half of someone's library, and the biggest thing they had in their deck was, like, seven, which is pretty reasonable, I think. So, you know, you exile something out of seven, your commander enters the battlefield with seven counters on it. If you can swing right away with a 14-14 that has ward sacrifice to permanence, and your opponent doesn't have any way to actually deal with it, and then you swing at them right away, they have to sacrifice, again, with Annihilator 7, sacrifice seven permanence for you to swing at them right away. So, yeah, that is absolutely deadly. And by having something out like this in play ahead of time, Again, you can be ready to do so, and it doesn't cost you anything extra to just swing right away. You just tap this, you give it haste, you swing right away. So yeah, haste is invaluable with this kind of a commander. Again, it's basically just like, oh, I, I took you out. Okay, goodbye. Next. Next up, Cloak of the Bat. This one is, uh, again, you're going to need a bit more mana. We'll talk about mana, though, because, yeah, you are going to be dedicating a lot of resources to resources. Cloak of the Bat. An equipment for two. Equipment creature is flying in haste. Uh, equip two. This does cost a little more to equip than you probably want because, again, you want to be able to like get your commander out and then immediately swing so you can just have a high impact because, again, your commander is going to have a huge target on its back, number one. Number two, you can just decimate an opponent and take them out of the game with one swing. This also going to take them out of the game again with evasion. So, again, that flying is very nice. Be able to go up and over your opponent's blockers. I mean, at least one of your opponents most of the time, again, will not have a blocker that is flying or reach, so you can typically get through them on them with something like flying some kind of evasion like that there are better forms of evasion out there but still being able to get through an opponent again like with that last example at 14 damage even if it's not 14 even if it is again let's say 11 which is probably a pretty low threshold if you're playing against like a low to the ground spell slinger deck and they have like four mana value is their highest then sure but most of the time i'd say that you're getting up at least five six seven counters maybe even more depending on the deck so yeah your commander is going to be a two shot ko the vast majority, if not all the time. So being able to fly through, hit an opponent, and potentially take them out in two swings is massive. Next up, Haunted Cloak. This one is somewhat similar, but it only costs one to actually equip. It costs three to actually get out. So you'd rather have the lower equip cost later because like early on, you can be like ramp, 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 get one of these things out and then equip it on my commander when I need to, when I need to get the commander out. So just having to pay what 11 in total, like your commander plus the one to actually give it haste is huge. Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. All those are massive. Again, your commander is going to be a massive blocker for you now. Good luck attacking into me when I've got my, again, let's just say 14-14. But also trample, get damage through as well. This and, of course, haste, the best part. Next up, Fire Shrieker. Quick creature is double strike, quip two. Yeah, like I mentioned, the vast majority of time, if not basically all the time, your commander is going to be a two-shot KO. I mean, it starts off as a three-shot KO with 7-7. Seven, seven, but again, if you just have a four converted mana cost card that is exiled, essentially... Then all of a sudden, it hits for 11, hitting now for 22 with Double Strike. That is a one-shot KO on any player. So, yeah, your opponent is going to basically be just out of luck if you are swinging at them because they're going to have to sacrifice so many things, and then they're also probably just going to get taken out right then and there. So, yeah, that is quite a disgusting thing. I mean, and maybe they can, like, survive one attack, and you're like, okay, I sacrificed four lands, and 
th three creatures on it. I have one blocker left, and I'll block with that and hopefully survive next time. But now you just, like, swing again. They had the sacrifice thing. They're going to be gone. Inquisitor's Flail. Yet another way to double things up, but, like, not with double strike. It's, it's kind of a weird one. Equip creature, if a equipped creature would deal combat damage, it deals double the damage instead. If another creature deals combat damage, equipped creature deals double that damage to that equipped creature instead. Basically, it doubles up the damage that it deals, and that is dealt to it. And that is completely fine the vast majority of the time, because your commander is massive. So, yeah, I mean, and also you're going to have ev evasion to actually get it through. You know, again, flying, whatever, essentially. But, yeah, being able to get it through, hitting doubly is hard. And, uh, yeah, you can very easily take someone out doubly is hard. Goodness gracious. Champion's Helm, yet another piece of equipment you might want to consider with this one. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two. So, that's nice. It really could put you over the top, too, if you really need to get to that one-shot KO. As long as Equipped Creature is legendary, it has Hexproof. So, yes, this only costs Equipped one. I can't believe this is budget-friendly. No, it definitely, definitely it used to be. But, yes, being able to give... Hexproof to your commander is huge. Yes, you have Ward 2 on it, but here's the thing. I, I mean, like, the disgusting nature of this commander makes it so that that Ward sacrifice... I said Ward 2. Ward sacrifice to permanence cost is actually kind of... Not not a low cost for it, but it's, it's well worth the Ward. It's well worth paying that versus allowing that to swing at you because what would you rather happen again in that scenario where it has seven counters on it, if you're the opponent playing against this ulamog would you rather you know cast your sword to plowshares sacrifice two of your permanents to get rid of that or would you rather allow that player to swing at you and then you sacrifice seven permanents it's an easy decision so again although it does have like ward Sacrifice to permanence. Again, that is a pretty low cost for what it could be. So yeah, giving Ulamog Hexproof obviously is again like perfect ward, what ward used to be basically. And uh, not allowing your commander to be targeted is pretty huge. Obviously, some indestructible things could help as well. Next up, Scavenger Grounds. A very simple card to add into the deck. You are in a color stack. Yeah, utilize utility lands. An amazing amount of utility lands. Still have some waste in there just in case. But yeah, tap for a colorless. Pay two tap. Sacrifice a desert. Exile graveyards. Even if this is the only desert. And we got some more desert utility from, uh, you know, the last set. Elder Center Junction. But now just being able to even just sacrifice this. It, that is a huge, well, panic button to be like, oh, okay. That player is playing like reanimation. That player is doing that with like self-mill. Graveyard shenanigans. Be like, oh, uh, no. Graveyards are gone. But also, again, with this commander, you could have a bigger, you know, mana cost at, in a graveyard than you have in exile. Again, you play your commander, you exile half someone's library. Most likely, you probably hit like a six, maybe seven, maybe even more than that. But let's say you didn't. Let's say you hit just like five was the highest. And then in a graveyard somewhere is someone's eight. Then you're like, oh, okay, I pop this. I get rid of all graveyards. Next time my commander comes in a player, or next time I cast my commander, I should say. Or you can do this ahead of time. Again, you're like, okay, cool do that and all of a sudden it's at eight so my commander comes up with eight counters on it which is even more deadly also stone speaker crystal i mean this one is just a mana rock which already you're going to want a ton of mana rocks in your deck probably like 20 plus right because your commander does cost 10 stone speaker crystal an artifact for four tap for two so very efficient very effective but also pay two tap sacrifice it exile any target players graveyards draw a card so again great graveyard hate which can come in really handy against certain decks and also again like i said hey set yourself up with that high mana value out of a graveyard and replace this by drawing a card or how about duplicate etb it's going to exile target non-token creature and as long as it's exiled uh, that is exiled creature card it has the power toughness and creature type of the last creature exile with it it's a two four but it can be obviously a lot bigger but of course if you exile something massive again something that costs like seven eight nine whatever it is Cool, you have that one card in exile that has that, you know, mana value. You're set up for the rest of the game with a giant mana value for your commander whenever you cast it to get a ton of counters on it. Scout from Existence, again, not the most efficient card when it comes to its cost, but still, you're in color, you'll take what you can get. Seven mana, instant exile target permanent. Yeah, exile that away. Again, this is a good panic button card, but also, yeah, get rid of the biggest thing in play. Like, okay, cool, you got that 10 mana value thing out there. Awesome, thank you for the 10 counters on my commander. Also, thank you, Wizards, for continuously reprinting Soul Ring. Finally budget-friendly now. Artifact for one, tabs for two. You're going to want an absurd amount of ramp in the stack. And because you're in Cuss, of course, you can be as efficient as you want to be. You don't have to worry about any mana fixing. You just can be incredibly efficient getting the best mana rocks out there, essentially, into this deck to get things going. Again, like I mentioned with the Utility Lands earlier, Forge of Heroes is a great one. Land that can tap right colors, tap, choose target, commander that enters the battle for this turn, put a counter on if it's a creature and a loyalty counter on if it's a Planeswalker. Having additional ways to just get counters on your commander can be massive, and one I land is quite nice. Being able to get more counters, because again, more counters obviously means more ability to get to a one-shot KO, but more importantly, perhaps, definitely more importantly in my opinion, 
get that annihilator up get that annihilator to an absurd amount so yeah utilize things to get counters on your commander proliferate effects etc etc or how about like blade of the blood chief <laughs> goodness gracious uh whatever creature dies put a counter equipped creature if it's a vampire two counters instead eh, your commander unfortunately isn't a vampire a vampire a drowsy blah uh but uh yeah it is we probably have a vampire drowsy at some point right come on it's got to happen at some point maybe i don't know i mean don't say changelings in the comments below come on i know i know that changelings are all creature types regardless getting extra counters on your commander uh yeah if creatures just get taken out left and right when your commander's in play with this on it all of a sudden your commander again just swings once and takes out someone's entire board and also is part a one-shot ko so yeah getting extra counters on your commander even after the fact can be absolutely amazing but now let's move on to the pricier picks again. Cards outside of my budget, but might be within yours. First up, Lightning Greaves. Creep Creature has Haste and Shroud equipped zero. So, yeah, again, like I mentioned, when it comes to actually granting your commander haste, the free abilities are probably going to be the best ones because, yeah, paying zero to equip this means that we can just freely attach this to our commander. That is massive. That is huge. Swing right away with your commander without having to worry about having extra mana available. And obviously with that Shroud, sure, you can't target your commander. Oh, darn. You can still make so that no one can target it at all, though. Again, it's it's a worse version of Hexproof, but still, you're probably willing to put this on your commander because now no one can target it. Your opponents can't target it. They can't deal with it, and you're just going to be swinging through and wiping out at least one player. Well, I mean, definitely one player. Yeah, pretty much. Next up, Swift of Boots. Basically the exact same thing, but instead of Shroud, it's Hexproof and Equip 1. Again, it costs one extra mana. You have to save up one extra mana. So instead of at 10, you got to be at 11 and get your commander out and swing right away. That being said, again, Hexproof is better than Shroud because, well, you can still target your commander. So being able to put on other pieces of equipment like we talked about, like Blade of the Blood Chief or whatnot, getting things going again. Picture Blade of the Blood Chief on your commander while you swing. That player sacrifices creatures. It's getting counters on it right then and there. Disgusting, gross, lovely. A Chromas Memorial, speaking of which. Creature control of flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, direct from black and from red. This is a crazy good effect. Again, it does cost seven, sure, but you're in Colas and you have a commander that costs 10. You're going to be ramping an absurd amount. So ramp, 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 get this out. Next turn, get your commander out in play. Have a fun time. Just swinging right away with your, again, hasty, trampling, vigilant, first striking, flying, pro black, pro red, commander. Good luck to any opponent dealing with that ever again. I mean, probably, probably you know, someone probably can. It's going to cost them a good amount to do so, but you can probably take out one player really quickly with this and then just take another player out next time your commander comes out. Also, again, other very simple lands to include in the deck, Eldrazi Temple, taps for cost or taps for two if you spend it on an Eldrazi spell, essentially. Spend, I should probably read it. Spend a spell he cast Eldrazi spells or activate abilities to cost Eldrazi that uh that is your commander it taps for two next up i have ugin colorless eldrazi spells you cast causes those cast pay seven taps search live for a colorless creature card reveal in your hand and shuffle uh, basically what you have these in here for are just to ramp quicker to get your commander out it's a very expensive way to do so but again if you already have this card you have the budget for it or whatever yeah it can help you get your commander out much quicker three and dynamo of course we get access to cards that are outside of my budget again unfortunately three and dynamo get reprinted again please more efficient, more effective mana rocks. Cost four, taps for three. Again, no mana fixing here, though, but no mana fixing needed. You're in Colas, so yeah, just ramp as quickly as possible. I mean, you go like Soul Ring, turn one, turn two, this, turn three. What are you at? I don't even know. Turn three, that's three mana, plus two, plus three, that's nine. You're really close. You're really close to get there, so you can get your commander out in absolutely no time with a hyper focused deck when it's built around this commander. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, yet another one I want to point out. Of course, you can go like Aldrazi Tribal with this commander if you really want to. And if you're not doing that, make sure you're considering something like this, uh, if you have the budget for it, if you already have this. A 10-10 Aldrazi that costs 10. When you cast a spell, exile two permanents. Indestructible whenever it attacks a player. Exile's top 20 cards of the library. This helps out in multiple ways, obviously. First up, well, it's a giant threat, and that's quite fun for you. But also, exile to permanence. Again, you can exile the biggest thing out there, and all of a sudden, yeah, again, your other Ulamog, your Ulamog commander, comes out with more and more counters on it. And of course, when this attacks, you also get to exile 20 cards off of someone's library, which is quite funny because you literally, well, you're adding to your count, right? You're adding to potentially getting even a bigger mana value card out there that is exiled. But also, like, you could, again, cast my new Ulamog, uh, the Defiler, right? It can exile the top half of someone's library. That's gone. That person's down to, I mean, probably, let's just say, 35 or so cards, maybe, by the time all this happens. Maybe 40, whatever it is. Cool. 
I swing with this once, I swing with this again, that player is gone. They're out of the game. I didn't even have to attack them with my actual commander. I just attacked them with my other Ulamog to get rid of the rest of their deck, and they are just gone because they are milled out. Even better than... Is there a different term for milling someone out of the exile, though? But, yeah, whatever it is. Anyways, this is definitely something to consider, and of course, if you just want to go Drowsy Tribal, I can be quite powerful as well. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on all this. Are. Do you think that the leaks are done? Do you think that we are done with leaks? Or do you think that between now and the end of May, something else will leak out there? Or if that box was somehow sold on Facebook Marketplace or whatever, might be getting leaks from another source. We shall see. I will keep you in the loop, though, of course, between now and then. And then as well, once we get to actual spoiler season. And we actually get to see if these leaks are actually real again. I do want to mention, just one more time, that they have not been officially confirmed, nor will they probably ever be until actual spoiler season comes out and those cards are revealed. We shall see if they are real. I believe they're real, personally. I do think, like, 99.999% chance that these cards are real. They all look very legitimate to me. It would take an absurd amount of effort to actually fake all this. Regardless, please take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you are interested in those cards, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. But please don't pick any of them up for the Commander deck unless you ask your playgroup first and be like, hey, okay, if I proxy this, and even if it's not a real card, am I still allowed to proxy it? Sure. And if not, just like bookmark it. And then once it's like actually available to be a real card, if it is, then pick that up. Regardless, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned to this channel for your more quick takes and spoilers and leaks. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.